Ongul and uh, the forest uh, when they trounced uh, the abundant uh, site by uh, three goals uh, to nothing, picking up that uh, ticket to be part of uh, the Nations Cup that is going to be hosted by the Ivory Coast uh, next year, January to be precise. Good evening, televiewers, and welcome to this edition of Prime uh, on My Media Prime. Uh, TV, an edition that is going to be looking at the performance of the Lions out there in uh, uh, Garwa as they picked up uh, that ticket for the Nations uh, Cup. We're going to be looking at uh, what was good, what was ugly and uh, bad with uh, their performance, but we're going to be looking at the prospects as uh, we look forward for a wonderful performance at the Nations Cup when we're going to be meeting the powerhouses of African football in the likes of uh, Nigeria, Senegal, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Morocco, Algeria, and others. We are going to be looking at this this evening with our panelists who are in the house with us. Uh, Mr. Ako uh, is uh, here. He is a sports analyst, uh, former footballer himself, and um, so, so much fan of the Indomitable Lions. We are glad to have you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Liu. Good, good evening to televiewers of uh, My Media Prime. Special good evening to uh, Ecole Lewis and uh, Tabi Abel, uh, both Tema plan managers of Mamfe and Guti, respectively. And a special good evening to the president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Mr. Samuel Etofis. We also are in the company of uh, Barista Tamfu. Uh, who is here with us. He is a politician. You know him more as a politician, but he also is a football uh, lover, follows the Indomitable Lions uh, very, very keenly, and also follow up what happens in Garwa. We're glad to have him with us uh, this evening. Thank you, Mr. Kum Leonard. It's always a pleasure for me to be on set, and uh, I would like to use your platform to extend my greetings to all the Camonians who watched this match. I know that uh, the Indomitable Lions gave us the joy that was highly needed and I also wish to use your platform to congratulate the Indomitable Lions for the brilliant uh, action they did yes, though they were least expected but they, they have proven to the world that uh, when uh, they want they can do it because we saw the fighting spirit that we usually uh, call upon them anytime that they have to defend the colors of this country. So. I'm very grateful to be here, and I think that we'll have a pleasant time to exchange together. Sports journalist with uh, My Media Prime TV, Ayo Magdela, is uh, with me this evening to also share with us what she observed during that encounter and how Africa reacted to Cameroon's qualification. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Good evening to you all, uh, my uh, favorite panelists here. Good evening to you all, televiewers of my Media Prime Television. You're welcome once again to this very uh, favorite, nice edition of uh, Prime Hour, where we are going to be talking about the Indomitable Lions qualification yesterday. And uh, like Mr. Liu said, of course, we'll be talking about the ugly sides as well of this encounter, because for all of you who watched, the first half was not uh, very, very satisfactory. But at the end of the day, it only shows that a lion does not sleep. It always wakes up from slumber when they are in danger. So stay with us. Ride with us two hours. It is going to be very, very interesting. I will bet you, you are not going to regret it. Good evening to you, Agawa Fashion. Glad to know that you are watching us from uh, Kumba Chief Town of Meme Division. Uh, Barista, I'll start with you. Um, no, 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 no. Mr. Ako, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Ako. Um, were you under pressure yesterday? Did you expect uh, an easy ride over the Burundi uh, national team? You know, uh, Leo, the Swallows didn't come to, to play. It was a game where any side could qualify. Okay. And I uh, remember in, um, in the first leg game that was played, I think, uh, on the 9th of June, 2022, where we won 1-0, and the lone goal was scored uh, by Carl Toko Ekambi. Uh, you, you realize that the goal margin was so slim. Mm -hmm. It was a 1 0. So that and, and the performance was uh, this matter? It was a dismal performance. Mm -hmm. However, we, up, we got three points. That tells you that uh, the Swallows of uh, Burundi, it's, they have become a force to reckon with because, as far as football is concerned today, there is no big or small team. <laughs> Any team that prepares gets the victory. Remember, during the last uh, World Cup, 
-hmm. Argentina that won the World Cup was defeated by Saudi Arabia and that was their lone defeat during the tournament. So um, the Swallows of Morocco uh, for Burundi yesterday definitely came to pick up the three points. And um, thanks to a very compact defensive uh, uh, game that we played during the first segment, we did not concede a goal. And also due to the brilliant performance of somebody like Andre Onana during the first segment of the game, we could contain the Burundi side. Um, when you talk of panic, definitely it's a football game. It comes with a lot of pressure. The game had a lot of stakes. Um, it's one of the rare games that we have actually played in Garoua. When you look at it so well, during the 2000, uh, this, during this period of qualification, we never played any game in Garoua. And this was a lone game that had to be played in Garoua. Um, we also saw administrate the state administrators, like the ministers, sports legends, they were all in Garwa. It tells you of the importance that Cameroonians definitely had attached to the game. Consequently, all those aspects of the football brings in a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Family members were watching their sons to play to qualify for uh, the national team. Abubakar was playing at the Rumdia Jar Stadium. Uh, a neighborhood where he was born. Consequently, there was so much pressure. But once again, Mr. Leo, in as much as uh, we were expecting victory from the Camer uh, from the Cameroonian side, I always say to m to whom much is given, much is expected. Uh, the Lions have given us so much victory. We adore them so much. We have had brilliant performances from our national team. Reasons why our expectations are always very high. We stand very tall as far as international football is concerned. When we are talking about the map of the uh, football map in the world, Cameroon and people like Samuel Eto, Roger Miller, they always stand very tall in terms of football. Reasons why a lot of pressure in and out of Cameroon was so high. In as much as Cameroonians were feeling so much pressure, other African nations were also glued to their, on their, TV, to their TV set to see what would be the, def the outcome of the game. <laughs> Fortunately for the Lions, we picked up three points. But what is, uh, we need to also recall is, in, during the qualification uh, 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 playoffs, we were lucky to have picked up six points from Burundi. We won Burundi home and away. Mm -hmm. Because we ended the the, um, um, the the tournament with seven points, we defeated Burundi home and away. We also drew with I uh, think uh, Namibia, and that gave us seven points, and we emerged top in our pool. At the end of the day, football is all is all about picking up the necessary points and getting the required co uh, qualification for the next phase of the tournament. Okay. Uh, always qualifying under very difficult uh, conditions. We saw. Uh, our last match for the qualification for the World Cup um, Barista. It was not easy out there in Algeria and uh, we had to wait for the last day to ensure qualification for Nations Cup. Has it become a trademark for Cameroon? Yes, uh, you see <coughs> there's this uh, peculiarity about uh, the Cameroon uh, football team that uh, it appears that it's only when they are in difficult moments that they react. And we, you will not deny, we made us what we experienced during the qualification for the World Cup. We almost had to play to the last, last, the last drop game. exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of some of some keen observers even could even say that uh, there was some kind of spirituality <laughs> in obtaining that qualification. And the the, ma the football match of yesterday also will not uh, be far from it because you saw how when they interrogated the the coach of the team. He spoke in a confident way that no, no matter what, uh, they were going to. The Philippe on Trambley. Yes, they were going to shake on the nets. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when you heard uh, Elamido of Garo speaking, even giving an exact score, uh, you see that uh, all everything was just centered around some kind of force which is being built. So and I think that is an opportunity for us to also question uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if in football there, there are issues of spirituality. Because when you looked at uh, the game of yesterday, the way it was played, I think that uh, we had to call some extra forces that came to play because uh, I will not lie to you, 
<laughs> we had no playing style, <laughs> though we are, uh, we call ourselves the indomitable lions. There was no concrete playing style, but we had to use maybe uh, our experience in football because everybody knows that they cannot write the history of football without uh, citing Cameroon. So we used our experience over the, the, the Swallows of Burundi. And I think that um, uh, the harmony also, because also what I also observe is that if there is one thing that unites this country is football. When it comes to football, we, 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 we put aside our differences of maybe tribalism or maybe marginalization. You try to see, you see some kind of unity love among Cameroonians, and I think that was felt exactly in the team that played yesterday. We saw how they were compact. Everybody was giving his own, putting his own physical efforts experience, expertise to make sure that uh, we, come, we came out this, with this victory. So I think it's something we should encourage that uh, whenever we are working in a team and having that fighting spirit, we, should, or we can expect this kind of result. But I think there is still much work that needs to be done. We need to maybe uh, the, the, the experts in the field need maybe to guide the coach of this team because uh, we have a lot of talents in this, in this team. And I think that uh, if those teams are used properly without putting politics, those players are used properly without putting politics into play, I think that we are able to build a team that can, a, a, a strong team that can confront any other team in the world. So uh, I, I, I was very happy seeing what happened yesterday, but I still believe that much needs to be done. Okay, much needs uh, to be done. Um, Ayong Magdela, you are a sports uh, journalist. Your appreciation on the mobilization of uh, Cameroon for this uh, crucial encounter. We know that uh, the nation, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, we say we are united, but they have, we have uh, lived uh, some divisive uh, days in Cameroon's uh, football with so many uh, polemics around this uh, team um, to suggest that there were some persons that were even praying for the Lions to lose out so that some a uh, those should be sanctioned and uh, uh, some, some sacked, yeah. yes but that's that's true I mean on un unarguably there were, there were some Cameroonians who did not want the Lions to to pick up the last qualification ticket to Ivory Coast not because they hate Cameroon or they hate the national team but because probably since controversy we've had controversies a lot with the management at the helm of uh, the Federation some people were just praying for this moment to happen so that at least it would be like uh, the, 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 the start of their downfall because we know that uh, in in the in over one here now with no heart we've not experienced joy at almost all levels of the national teams. I, I bet for the under-20 Lions of Cameroon who came back uh, with the, the gold medal at the Francophony Games out there. So, uh, Mr. Liu, I would want to say I really, really appreciate the efforts of the Indomitable Lions yesterday. Like I said, they woke up from slumber, especially during the last 45 minutes of the game as we witnessed out there the proof beyond reasonable doubts that indeed they were Lions. Especially, I would really want to to uh, agree with what Mr. Ako said, we saw a fighting spirit yesterday at the back line of the, the, Nash, the Cameroon national team. Uh, Harold Mukudi, uh, Christopher Wood, they were so, 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 so impressive. They did their best to, to ensure that we do not concede a goal. And of course, the overall uh, defense, my call him a defense man, because yesterday he acted as not just a keeper, but a sweeper. I'm talking about no other person than Andre Unana, who did marvelous at the back line yesterday for Cameroon. And whether we like it or not, we need to accept it. If not for Andre Unana, we would have considered about two or three goals in the first half of the game, because we saw him make over four saves, key crucial saves in this half of the game. Andre Unana made saves that were unimaginable and Cameroon did not concede. We saw the first 45 minutes, Burundi were the better side in this encounter. It was only after probably went to the locker room, we realized that we need to wake up from slumber, we need to ameliorate our game, and then we came back and was. But then I would also want to uh, uh, appreciate the collective effort, especially efforts of uh, uh, the uh, partnering of, of uh, Brian Bemo and, of course, 
with some midfielders like Olivier Kemen, but we saw uh, we saw a little bit we saw laxity between uh, Chupo Moting and uh, uh, Chupo Moting and partnering of I think there was a problem there. There was really a problem there, and that made me uh, wonder why Muminga Mali was on the bench. But at the end of the day, we needed results, nothing but results. But I will still come back to say it that I was not impressed at all with Olivier Mbaizu. That's the truth. Mm. I've never, I've, I've, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I've never been impressed with his playing style, and I, I think that is the reason why he's not has, he's not had uh, much game time, especially with the Lions or as a starter. Olivier Mbaizo yesterday made me think that, or made me say that Five Collins wing was really lacking. Five, I mean, I think that even without club, Five Collins could defend his position. We saw it yesterday lacking. Probably somebody to help do the crosses. At the end of the day, uh, Brian Bemo or Toko Ekambi could be the only people to do that. But if we had somebody like Five Collins, I think that one of those corner kicks would have taken advantage to at least get it converted to a goal yesterday. So his wing was really, really lacking behind because Mbaizo could really not impressed but with the collective efforts i think that it was uh super during the second half of this game the lions did their best and of course we got the results kudos to brian bemo this guy has 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 really proven that he is a true lion and he has already he, he merits his place in the national team i think that he has already built his sport at the wing of the national team brian bemo is indeed a true lion he is of course uh the second highest scorer at the english premier league as at now so Brentford, Brentford really is benefiting from this, uh, this uh, huge uh, uh, input from Brian Bemo, and we saw it yesterday with the national team at a time when we needed just, it was just barely 45 minutes and a few seconds when Cameroon got the first goal. So Brian Bemo really, really made things possible yesterday for uh, Cameroon, and we saw a defender coming to score again. And of course, when Sang Abu Bakar, we were playing at his backyard, so it was only normal for him to seal it all, and then Cameroon got the victory. But I would still want to say that we should always ensure we take our chances. I, I think that looking at the first half of the, ga the game yesterday, Cameroon really underestimated Burundi. That's the truth. Okay. Cameroon underestimated Burundi because if we didn't underestimate Burundi, I was expecting that during the first 30 minutes, we at least get a goal. But we saw what Burundi did. The first uh, almost, almost 10 minutes into the game, you, you could hardly see Burundi's goalkeeper. You could mm. hardly see Burundi's goalkeeper, but we always saw Anjona trying to make saves. We always saw him trying to clear uh, danger, and it, oh, it, it was obvious that Burundi pressed during the early hours of the game, and it was only after that Cameroon realized that they needed to do something, and we could not. We it's been it's been a very long time. I think almost a decade or over a decade since we last hosted uh, the national team at Garua. Imagine the humiliation and everything that would have happened if Cameroon did not win this encounter. So I would really want to say that we are impressed. At least they've, they've, they've helped the nation. They've removed shame from the nation. And they, they succeeded in picking up the last ticket. But at least as top of Group C over uh, Namibia and uh, unfortunately Burundi cannot make it to their uh, second AFCON participation. But I want to end by saying that um, Song is the unsung hero who has not been spoken uh, 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 wasn't spoken at by so many people. He is the unsung hero, but we know that since he was appointed at the home of the national team, we've not gotten satisfactory results at all. But this is a man who has qualified Cameroon for two major tournaments. So whether we like it or not, we need to give him his credit. That is that, is, that is a question I have for you, Julio. Okay. You are a, a, a sports man yourself. Um, so much has been talked about um, Bemo and uh, the team, but very little is said about Song Rigobe and uh, Fika Food President. If we had lost, you know, um, Leo. Before I get to that question, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday the game, the Burundian side started in a formation of three-five-two. Mm -hmm. They had five midfielders, and it therefore means when they c we had. Um, a system of four, two, three, one. Uh, Chipo Morton playing behind Abubaka. Then you had uh, Brian Buemo and Carl Tokokambi, the flanks. We had a Keme as well as um, uh, Zambo Angisa. Mm -hmm. Then we had the back, uh, four, back four. On the other side, you had the Burundian side that had a five man 
in the midfield. Okay. Reasons why it was so compact at the, at the first segment of the game. Reasons why when they had to go back to the drawing board, the coach needed to change the strategy to see how we, he could talk to the guys to get the balls to the, uh, to the strikers as fast as possible. If you watch the game, in the second segment of the game, um, Zambo Angisa had to move a lot more upward mm -hmm. to give more energy to uh, uh, to Chupo Moten, who was a little weak yesterday, and that's why we could get a lot of pressure at the side of the Bur the Burundian side. Mm -hmm. We need to read the game and look at the movement, and that's why I applaud Song a lot, because people don't seem to understand. You need to go back to the drawing board. You must have identified your issues. You go back to the drawing board, work on it in order to get the goals. And we forget to know that it can only be when you have, you see your errors that you of can course. go back to your ameliorating. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Excellent. Because mm -hmm. when he looked at it, we now only, he understood where our problem was coming from. Yes, yes. So Kemen needed to sit backward to support the defenders. Zambo had to move forward to give a lot of energy to uh, Chupo Moten, mm -hmm. who was a little weak yesterday. And reasons why, at the end, uh, during the course of the game, they had to replace uh, Chupo, mm -hmm. Eric Maxim Chupo Moten. We had people, somebody like Carl Tokwe Kambi, as uh, I think Jack Clinton came in. Mm -hmm. uh, in the course of the game, when we had hard goals, they had to replace somebody like Brian Buemo as well. The coach looked at where things were going wrong and we needed to, do, he did the right substitution. So all the replacement that he did definitely bore fruit yesterday. And that's the science in football. Mm -hmm. And that's the, was the one who assisted Abu Bakr. Mm -hmm. And that's the, 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 the uh, technical aspect of football, that whether you like it or not, yesterday, Song was the man of the match. Because <laughs> he understood where we were feeling and needed to close the, the gap by bringing in and thank when we got the goal in the second segment 45 i think that was 45 seconds immediately the game started mm -hmm. resumed we got a goal uh, scored by brian buemo it, they, it what happened the burundian side were now obliged to come out from their shell because they were so compact in the mm -hmm. midfield mm -hmm. when we scored they had to come out in coming out it gave yeah. the opportunity for Zambo Angisa to win more balls in the midfield. Mm -hmm. When you looked at it, he won many balls in the midfield because the Burundian side were now moving upward to orchestrate opportunities. Unfortunately for them, they had the, but their backyard became exposed and we had m two more goals. And that's the beauty of football. And it takes only a coach that has the mindset, a, a victorious mindset, to look at it, look at the drawing board and say this is, these are the issues that are ongoing mm -hmm. and we, we, he needs to make some changes. Kudos to Rigo, uh, Coach Rigobert which I use this opportunity to applaud a lot because people seem not to understand he is doing so well for the Lions. He has qualified us, he qualified, we went for the World Cup and in the World Cup he, we were eliminated but we came back with four points, got a, a victory against Brazil with uh with uh drew against Serbia it was a three all a draw that we had a defeat we came back we're 19 in the tournament we didn't come back 32 like it was the case in 2010 this time around we came back in 19 position um he has qualified us again for the Afcon Côte d'Ivoire and yet we Cameroonians don't talk about it mm -hmm. it's high time we start to appreciate the work these guys have been doing. We have uh, the president at the helm of uh, the federation, Mr. Samuel Etofis. A lot of controversies, but I'll tell you, Mr. Kumle, now we need to look ourselves into the mirror. In, in, we need to look ourselves in the mirror. What these gentlemen are doing, they are cracking the stones with their hands. Because when you are in a, in a context where you are not having all the required support, you rather than for Cameroonians to give them the necessary support in order for us to achieve better things we are in the spirit of bring somebody down but unfortunately it doesn't work in all scenario because these guys once again both that they have proven because it was like a sledgehammer was on the head of Song and Eto yesterday waiting for them for the Lions not to qualify for the sledgehammer to go down on them but Again, football, we shouldn't have so much animosity. Football is a game of love. 
and it's a game where we need to come out with the right strategy and pick up the victory these two gentlemen in their play days they were heroes for this nation and people keep saying that you cannot match their capacity as players and their current capacities as managers i always differ a lot because uh mr leo when we look at football i will look at other domains in life look at somebody i'll just take you to the music world look at somebody like asalfo who is mm -hmm. ivory coast Prodigy, well, yeah? appointed in a senior role in the state of the state look at somebody like um yusundu of senegal was appointed senior role at the level of the state mm, it's only in cameroon where we have to belittle we everyone. have to start belittling our own icons mm -hmm. i can tell you these guys they are doing so much work to ensure that we change the landscape of football in this nation be it at the um the local level or at the international level mm -hmm. they are putting a lot of energy to ensure that cameroonian players are at players out there are attracted today leo look at the turnout yesterday it was a full capacity stadium in Garoa. Look at the turnout during the, the, the interpose in Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. Look at the turnout during the playoffs in, in Douala at the Bipanda Mispo Stadium. Look at the turnout. We watch all those games. Even during league games. I mean. And the population, because of these guys, people are hungry. That anxiety, that love is there to go back and watch football. And all what I can encourage Cameroonians is that we should leave behind our differences and focus in constructing football and building up our football so much so that Cameroonian footballers would be admired no, in and out no, of this country. No, no, no we, are, we are looking at the prospects uh, for the uh, Nations Cup. Uh, how convincing were the Lions yesterday, Barista? Well, I want to differ with uh, the sport consultant because, uh, like I said, it's true we won the match, but when I looked at the playing style, it was very difficult for me to understand exactly uh, which playing game are we strong at. Was it that we had a very strong defense? Was the midfield okay where the, uh, the, the attackers to their task? I saw a lot of ball being lost by Tokwe can be. I could not see uh, um, uh, this guy, uh, this other striker that plays with uh, the German team. Eric Maxim. Yeah, Maxim Tupu meeting. Yeah, so but he said he was he was he was sort yes, of formed so yesterday. Good. So just to tell you that there was no actual playing style of the Lions when when we are in those our days. Somebody like uh, Five Collins to me, I saw that he was his absence was really felt yesterday. So to me, I still believe that though we had that victory of yesterday, there is still much that needs to be done. We are, should not be, I cannot be giving too much praises on the coach because like I said, I have the impression that uh, the gods are working in his favor. And that's why we have the impression that uh, he's doing a lot. We actually, we are not playing with any playing style and there are a lot of poly polemics or politics that still surrounds the team which I believe that we need to look into. You are a politician. What, what, what are some of the politics that are... Yes, we, 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 also what happen, yeah, we also what happened during the, the, the World Cup where a, a very brilliant player like uh, Andre Onana was, uh, retire, was forced to retire from the, from the competition. Uh, if not, maybe because of the love he has for his country, another person will have maybe turned out this other... Uh, invitation or convocation that they, they, they offered him because we saw the, the, the message that he sp passed out when he left the World Cup. So it's, I think to me, his decision to come back to the team uh, really needed you to reach to a certain level before you accept that kind of uh, uh, calling. So I think that uh, we should put politics aside. I didn't understand why somebody like Fai Collins was not called for this team. Also, there is this player that you called, uh, which uh, uh, there's a player that was there around the, uh, down the yeah, Baizo good. You see that Baizo was completely lost in the match. I mean, so I really asked myself, why, why, what was his, why, what role was he playing? So you see, when you have some of these players, I am glad that today we have left people like uh, Nicolas Kulu, which was to, was already maybe the the, the 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 manager saw that the team manager saw that no. We could not continue to accept 
his, his errors or his favoritism of some players because you will not you will not understand why at times you will call Basogov, you will call Kulu when we all know that uh, they have all fit out. So I think that uh, if we put politics aside surrounding uh, our football team, we saw how what you just what you just narrated now, Barista. Yes, goes back to what obtained in uh, the World Cup for the case of Onana and uh, maybe Basogov who was not there and Kulu. We we're talking of yesterday. Yes, what was the politics that you saw yes, in the, the politics I saw yesterday is that the president of the food, uh, the, the president of the Cameroon Football Federation. You see, he was not too implicated into the team like we used to see him before. At times, we we'll see during the <laughs> training sessions, maybe his presence will influence some of the players, or maybe his influence, will, his presence will influence maybe the choices of the of, of the coach. So we saw how distance he was a little bit, which is still politics. We mm -hmm. saw how <laughs> he's we, dead. There is politics. He's not dead. No, we saw how he was. The, 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 there was a, f a, a complete mobilization of almost the minister was there. Mm -hmm. All all players, uh, all uh, players were there. I saw um, Joseph Antoine Bell, Joseph was Antoine there, Bell Roger, Roger Miller. Miller. You mm -hmm. see, when you see, you have that kind of a synergy. That's still politics. You try to bring back all those log people who are at loggerheads with you together to tell that though. What should unite us is football. We should leave our political polemics aside mm -hmm. and we focus our energy. And you saw that when that was done yesterday, there was no way possible that we could lose the match because we put all our forces to make sure that we obtain the results. So if we put politics aside, surrounding Fika Food, surrounding the Indomitable Lions thing, I'm sure that uh, we'll have brighter days ahead because. Uh, it's not, it's, we, we, don't, we will not gain anything seeing our team losing. I think we are all happy that uh, the, 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 the team has qualified. And we think that if we put politics aside, concentrate on the football, we'll be able to have results. We'll be able to have uh, results. Uh, people watching us uh, from across uh, Cameroon, I'll read uh, some of them who are watching. And um, I'll greet them also. When I said I was going to do this program today, many persons did not believe. So, Bisu, good evening. Uh, you're watching us uh, from Boya. Uh, Prus Prus is watching live from Yaoundé Oza. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Liu. Thank you. Cod Rose is watching from Mamfi. Uh, Kel Kelese Nkeng is uh, Ampankeng. Yafi watching from Bangulan in Ngoketunja. GT Cipren is watching from Yaoundé. G Thierry is watching from uh, Bafu Sam. Kutwa Mercy is watching from Malong. And uh, Vivian Kang is uh, watching from Bamenda. Uh, Chance Akebi Bright is watching live from Kumba. Uh, Blessing Bewa is watching from Yaoundé. El Haji Dangote is watching from Bafmeng, okay? That is in Fungum subdivision, Menchum division. Awo Oswine is watching live from the capital city of the Southwest region. That is a Boya city of uh, legendary hospitality. Yasao or Venui Yusuf is watching from a source in Yaoundé. Good News Yo is watching from Douala Emmanuel. Uh, Binanjo is watching from Iraq. Uh, Tufo in Geneviva is watching live from Fundam. Mr. Koma, I now believe. You, I thought you were only joking that uh, we will meet on Prime R. Ah, okay, Cynthia. Belness Cynthia is watching from Yaoundé BMRC. Ngwa Karin. Good evening. I'm watching from Tamulung. Yes, my former quarter out there in Bomenda. Jirunebu is uh, watching from somewhere in Cameroon. Uh, Don Frank is watching from Bonaberry. El Borizu is watching from Boya. Luxa uh, Flora is watching from Yaoundé Collins. Ebolo is watching from my four limbe. Bless um, Botake uh, says it's uh, good. The del deliberations are fantastic. Jeff Soli is watching from Yaoundé. Tata Andrew is watching from Limbe. Nkem Vanessa, I uh, don't know where you're watching from. Sky Clue keeps says I'm watching from Kambe. Good evening, Fidelis. Uh, Ching says I'm watching from Tui. Uh, Casey Chuye is watching from Bonaberry. Uh, Agba Brenda is watching from Kumba. Uh, Piwengo Olivia is watching from Bermenda. And uh, Chris Chris is watching live from Batibo. Good evening to all of you watching us uh, this evening. Now, tell me about um, the feeling you have of uh, the team spirit that was uh, exhibited by the players uh, yesterday. We know that uh, Onana has staged his comeback uh, into the Lions uh, then yesterday uh, after... Oh, no some days back mm -hmm. 
though the match was played uh, yesterday after he actually resigned him. Yes, but we also know of the outing of Abubakar concerning what uh, transpired between him and uh, the head coach and also the head coach. Uh, do you think that that division and Mosti uh, actually <coughs> played yesterday or almost everything was buried and we saw a team that fought for the nation? I think that I will buy the second thing you just said because even on uh, the other program here, I think in the house or uh, the day before the game, I said it that even if there is a problem, I think that at this point in time, it is best we keep it aside and we face the game because this is a crucial game. The hearts of the nation is at stake here. You are carrying the hearts of over millions of people and joking with it. No, it's not time for us to to put our differences in front of us, but keep it aside. Even Abu Bakar said it yesterday on post-match interviews. He appreciated the efforts of uh, the team, and yesterday we saw it Onana humbly uh, defended the, the, the national team yesterday as a true lion that he is. And when you saw his performance yesterday, you hardly tell if this goalkeeper is somebody who has bought something in his heart or this is somebody who actually is not d'accord with his, t with his management. When he came back, uh, when he came out of retirement and came back to the Lions then, one of the first pictures we saw was that of him and the, the head coach. I mean, when you, when you see a picture like that, it, it gladdens your heart a lot. It tells a lot. I mean, a picture is it speaks a lot you could interpret that picture and say probably this for Onana to stand and uh, exchange uh, or, or have a conversation with the head coach, does this mean that the, the differences have been buried, the differences have been kept aside for for the good of the nation? For uh, I mean, we have one common objective now, qualification to the 2023 AFCON in Ivory Coast next year. It, it, it could be. It could be. I mean, we saw it yesterday, like I said, on a play like somebody who did not even have a problem with the national team. But, but the truth is, I would want to side with Barista because it, it cannot make us sway away from the fact that there was indeed a problem and for we need to we need to equally thank the nation who ensured that he came back. That's the truth. This is, look at look at somebody we were, we were losing. I said during the first half, I would have had at least two goals during the first half. No, That's but, but, but why don't you also believe that if another goalkeeper but, there, to there play, is not, he, this, he, is, he this, is, this is this is one of yeah, the world best. At this point in yeah. time, Mr. Leo, we cannot take chances. We couldn't just sit back and take chances in a game like this. We couldn't sit back and take chances. Honestly, maybe uh, probably one of the reasons when Anna was not comfortable during the World Cup is because this person... Nicola uh, Nkulu was there. Exactly. <laughs> but during the last game, we saw it. We saw the last game, Nkulu was, was, was kept aside. Onana was equally not in the last game, but we saw a different pairing of Christopher Wu and Castelletto, and it was, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. We saw it, so probably what he said couldn't be far from the truth, but we are not, we would not also silent the fact that at the end of the day, a player needs to be disciplined. We don't know whether he was indisciplined or he was not indisciplined, indisciplined because at this point in time, nobody is saying anything. No one has said anything, and Joe Nana is not saying anything. He just goes about saying it in uh, in parables, indirectly. The national team as well. That's where there's a problem. How you even call, anyway? It's not necessary though. But we saw them call back a player who was suspended or for indiscipline without the suspension being of lifted. But this is a player who has defended the nation, and yesterday he was man of the match. Unarguably, he was man of the match and he deserved it kudos to Andrew Nana because he did a wonderful job for Cameroon yesterday we saw a collective spirit we saw how 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 the Lions I mean I was so glad when I saw um, uh, Regis Muge Regis go go hawk uh, um, Nuhu Tolo Nuhu Tolo carried him on the back but this is just a boy who has been called the national team for the very first time imagine it was so beautiful to watch this people bond like this so it only it, it, it only speaks volume that yesterday they had buried everything aside for the common good of the nation and we saw the team captain abu bakar he, he he stands like the mouthpiece of the national team and he said it yesterday that he was so impressed with the team spirit you didn't see a lot of vexation on the pitch you didn't see um probably uh, there was a there was a part where um uh, harold mukudzi had to cover the lapses of 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 uh, 
uh, Christopher Wu, and also we saw how Olivier, Olivier Mbaizo blundered a lot. But you didn't see and Jordan, and normally he used to, we know him as a kind Shout of the guys exactly. Manchester United, yeah? Exactly. But, yeah, he he doesn't the, joke with them. Yeah, they were all calm, you see. He doesn't joke with Confident, them. Confident, yeah. And this makes us think that probably it, it, it is a backline of that team that has a problem now, and not Andrew Nana. But yesterday we saw him, he was level-headed, he was calm, Maybe. he didn't shout, he didn't buy his own team fair, buy his own why, why, why aren't you also talking about Rigo? Maybe Rigo said... But of course... Why, but, but why true, aren't you mentioning we, we, like I said, this is I said at the start that this is an unsung hero. Whether we like it or not, we need to give him the credit. Because at a point where we needed qualification, he gave us the ticket. At a point where we needed qualification to the FIFA World Cup, he gave us the ticket. Like I said, he is the unsung hero and needs to be given his credit. But we should also not learn the fact that since he was appointed at the national team, uh, we've not had satisfactory results. We've not had satisfactory results. So, if he needs to be there, then he needs to step up his game. The, what, 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 he should what, not, he should not play he with took, the hearts of people. Yes, since he took over, what, according to you, were his uh, objectives? I think that when normally, he took over, it was to qualify. It was to qualify us for the World Cup. That's that's true. And then true. qualify us for the Nations Cup. Mm -hmm. But he always wakes up on slumber when it's, he's already in danger. Did he meet his objective or not? He met the objective, but <laughs> not at the point where we needed it. Come on, we cannot be playing a, a crucial game against against. Bur I beg, let's let's really accept the truth. We cannot be playing. Cameroon cannot be playing a do or die crucial match against Burundi. Really? <laughs> ah, no. Mm -mm. Yes, but um, Mr. Ako, let's 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 look at this. It appears all the attentions of uh, all footballing nations across the world were focused on Cameroon, and we also noticed the attention that Cameroon received when they hosted the Nations Cup. Almost everybody was waiting to see something negative about Cameroon to celebrate. And yesterday was so, so uh, that situation. What has Cameroon done to the world to deserve this? Well, we have done, we, we have gotten a performance to whom, uh, we, you know, um, there is an African adage that you don't throw stones on a, uh, a tree that, 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 that doesn't bear fruits. Mm -hmm. So definitely we, there is so much fruits that it comes from Cameroon. It's a nation that has a lot of glory as far as African f and world football is concerned. It's a nation that has, we have gotten um, the talents. We have gotten the Roger Miller, the Samuel Eto, the Patrick Boma, the Thomas Nkono, and so on and so forth. Those are, uh, when we talk about the current FA president, Samuel Eto, four time African best player. Um, third world best player while playing for Barcelona, has won so many trophies as far as international football is concerned. He has once been the highest paid player when played while playing for Anji Mashkakala. He is somebody who has been uh, at the top of football. When you look at other players, think about the era for the, the year 2000 and 2002. We won the AFCON back to back which is rare to find as far as world football is concerned, irrespective of the, uh, where you find yourself in the world. Be it at the Como Ball or the CONCACAF level, it's r difficult to find a, a nation that backs um, uh, the trophy uh, in two con consecutive years. It's rare to find it. Reasons why we have been admired. I look at it in, form in a positive sense, like we have been admired in international level, so much so that other nations fear when, uh, whenever we, we, we are present. So, be it at the international level, you saw l few persons expected um, Cameroon to defeat Brazil, but we stood our grounds, we, uh, we understood that it's a game that we could win, and we actually got uh, the victory. Come to think about it, in the 2003, during uh, the Cameroon, Conf uh, during the Confederations Cup, we, defi uh, we were in the finals. We only lost to, to, to the French side. Mm -hmm. When we, uh, unfortunately, was uh, the period where Fue Marc Vivian, we had the demise of Fue. Come to think about the Olympics, we have been uh, the gold medalist as far as the Olympics is concerned. You remember in 1984, we won our first African Nations Cup in, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. And we'll be in Cote d'Ivoire in some few in months. In 2024. In 2024. We'll oh, be in wow. Cote d'Ivoire again. It, it tells you that we have a history, be it at, in a collective manner with the Lions, mm -hmm. be it at the level of individual talents. Cameroon is a nation which is blessed. When you look at um, 
um, in the early 2000s to 2006, 2008, you could see that most of the first tier clubs in Europe, you always find a Cameroonian player. Come look at our squad in the year 2002. All our players were playing in first tier clubs in Europe and mm -hmm. playing in the first four best European leagues. And reasons why Cameroon is recognized at the international level. And today, some of those icons are passing over their knowledge to the new generation. In 2020, in 2017, we won the AFCON in Gabon. L few persons expected Cameroon to win, but we stood our grounds and we won the trophy. And once again, we wrote our name on the golden book as far as uh, 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 African Nation Cup is concerned. Here in Cameroon, we didn't pick up the victory, like I think in the 1972, where we came out third in the tournament, mm -hmm. even though we hosted the, the, the event. But once again, we came out with a bronze medal, which that is an honorable role. This nation, other nations, I use the word admiration, not envy, because we have uh, we are highly performant as far as football is concerned. And today we are also blessed with infrastructures. Some years ago we complained we never had infrastructures, but today we are blessed. Reasons why an international game could be moved from Yaoundé to Garoua with, with little or no complaint from CAF. Likewise, we'll be expecting that future games could also be played in Southwest. Yeah, but we've, we've seen the Lions play in, in Limbe. We, we need to watch them play in other regions, mm -hmm. not only in Douala or Yaoundé. We want to see them play. Use and all and our and other and infrastructure. In Cameroon, other countries are, are using our, mm -hmm. our infrastructure. Exactly, today. like the Central African Republic, they play hosted their games in, in Cameroon. Cameroon. Angola played their games in, in Cameroon. Cameroon. So Cameroon today has become a hub of, international, of African football. We are not only at the level of playing and winning trophies, we, we have the mindset even at the level of the administration is the construction of some of those infrastructures. Even though internally we want to do better by improving the, the standard of those infrastructures, however, that doesn't take away the fact that those infrastructures are there today okay. and we can only get Bar better. Bar Barista, what would account for this uh, spirit always haunting uh, Cameroon, the national team too, uh, wanting to qualify on the last day? <laughs> we saw the case for uh, in Algeria and yesterday in Cameroon. Cameroon is a very lovely country when it comes to football. At times you even have the impression that um, they want to draw attention to it. They want to draw, draw attention to them. Mm -hmm. They want to wait the last minute to, to, to show their colors. Yeah, but, but, so, but this brings enormous pressure. Yes, but maybe that's a, a style of Cameroonians of Cameroonians because you see that we want to create attention with the last minute to show that no we are capable. And you see that when we do that it creates some kind of animosity. Some people even believe that uh, they cannot host any of their competitions if the Cameroonian team is not there. I saw how most Ivorians said, if Good. Cameroon is so not coming, then... <laughs> Ivorians were instead supporting uh, uh, the, the, our Cameroonian team yesterday, said that no, we cannot, it's, it will be unimaginable that we host the, the African the Nation Cup without... That Cameroon even if present. Burundi so were to beat Cameroon, they, were all they, they would look for a way <laughs> to bright so, for Cameroon to come so here. So they were all behind us, and I think that that's the beauty of it. We remain a very big uh, nation as well. But are we not struggling also because of the politicking that you talked about here? where we see uh, politicians coming into these, uh, maybe traditional rulers coming into almost everything. We see how football is managed elsewhere. Yes, definitely. We know we, it's, it's just of recent that we, we know the people who have always managed our football have never been professionals. I think we have passed some very dark years as far as our football is concerned. And uh, just of recent, I think we are coming back to limelight, where you see almost all the attentions of Cameroonians are being uh, directed towards the management of Cameroonian football. We even had a time where our league was suspended. We we're not playing football. So you see, all this put together, I think, uh, is what has really hindered the situation. And I think that and all this was due to politicians being involved into, into the affairs of, of football. So I think that if we leave football to the footballers to the actors they will manage it properly but when politics come into play i don't see why a Cameroonian should sit and be praying that the, the national team should lose 
you see that's even being unpatriotic because uh, football is the only thing that I think we all agree when it comes to football and I think that at this kind of moment where all our expectations are on the team to qualify to obtain a ticket I think that it, it is but normal and necessary that no matter the politics that we may be having or the site that we may be holding we can put it aside and then concentrate that energy and prayers to make sure that our team goes and obtain the victory that we, we, we strongly deserve also I will not uh, deny the fact that uh, the gods too are on our side, like I said earlier, <laughs> because uh, we, we, we still don't have that playing game that we can, when we see a team, we can conveniently tell you that today we will not conceive a goal. Many people were surprised that Onana has not considered a goal because <laughs> some people even termed him that he's somebody that concedes one every match. So you see that we, if, we, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we, we, we look at some of this, we will be thinking that no, we we we, they, we need some they, we need some spiritual cleansing in that team, and we should we should the team also should be be sincere. Give give players should be chosen on the basis of merits, not on the basis of maybe tribalism, not on the basis of politics. If somebody's merits his position, he should be given the position and encouraged. Not that we are strong to only criticize. Like now, we have a serious problem. I see a serious problem with, 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 the, with, the, with the coach. I want that he should listen to maybe those who are experts. He should not feel, think that he, he knows all. He should listen to his collaborators, ameliorate the playing style of, uh, of the team. And also... Did the collaborators tell you that he does not listen to them? No, we saw how we saw... You know, when, when, you, when he comes out for press conference, the way he speaks at times you have the impression that he's completely out of uh, like uh, he's on his own <laughs> yes you will see him coming out with proverbs which you have to dissect to understand but exactly is, what he's saying that is his style so he, that's why i'm saying that he's confusing some of us because at times when, you're in danger, when <laughs> you ask him that how is the team feeling he will tell you you will quote a proverb <laughs> you are there you want to be, ask yourself that okay as this man is talking today like this is it that the team is informed or not you see at least we want him to communicate so that at least we were on the back but every coach has their style you, you <laughs> see you see jose Mourinho has his style eh? when he went to 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 england the press had a way of uh, uh, addressing uh, him. Yes, yes, but he had his time, and he's not moved from it. What is wrong with some no, no, choosing to to be this no, uh, he, wise man of Africa, always talking in yes, parables? Uh, um, based on what uh, the barrister just said, uh, we need to be reminded mm. that Song is not working alone. Song has somebody like Raymond Kala working with him. Song has Says Simon Adam. Augustine, Simon Augustine. Mm -hmm. working with him, and we all know that Simon Augustine was once one of the best strikers that this nation had. We all know that Kala Congo Ramon was one of the best central defenders, home and abroad. Song isn't working all alone. So that is the synergy. But there is one thing that the population wants, and that's what is not given to them. The populations want, they want to put, put their nose where it shouldn't be. Everybody is a coach. No, it doesn't work that way. And reasons why today I always say and I celebrate the presence of Sirindo, who is the communication officer for the Lions. Because communication that is, when players are together, there is a spirit which is different. And when you take what they do and you try to interpret it, you might interpret it in a very wrong direction. And that's why players always like to keep, they like to keep information quiet. And that's why, more often than not, Players during their, tra not all training sessions are open to the public because there are attitudes. For example, you could be the best, the highest goal scorer, and today you're the one who has to pick bottles. But if somebody doesn't understand that that is how football people live, you might write a wrong article. Within, during training session, you, a player could be asked to sit not because he has been told to sit, but because it's the way football, the football society live. And if you have not understood those basics, as far as football is concerned, you might be writing the wrong article. When we talk about Andre Onana coming back, in football, there is what we call autocritic. Autocritic is, after the game, the player sits, 
with the administrative staffs. Only players and the admin staff, exclusive of journalists. And we talk about the issues. And when we talk about issues, it's channeled to the coach. And each person can channel to say whatever. But the coach remains the individual who makes the final decision. It therefore means you could be right, but that doesn't mean you've been right. That's the decision that will be implemented. Mm -hmm. That is the canon of football management as far as okay. this world uh, is well, concerned. We, we are coming back at you. Let's take a short break to continue right after. Academic year 2023-2024 with Subdeco. Follow relocated training and obtain your diploma co-signed by the French and Cameroon's government. Bachelor from the Clermont Ferrand Business School, International Finance, International Business, International Marketing, Master of Science from the Clermont Ferrand Business School, Control, Audit and Corporate Finance, International Trade and Digital Marketing, Higher National Diploma and Bachelor Degree, Accountancy, Banking and Finance, Logistic and Transport, Trade Marketing, Human Resource Management, Project Management, Information System Management, Master's Degree, Accounting, Audit and Control, Banking and Finance Engineering, Human Resource Management, Project Management and Entrepreneurship, Logistic and International Trade, Information System Management, Location, Subdeco at Ngusso near Hotel Paradis Junction. Contact 656 90 35 16 6 75 56 91 89. Website subdeco.com. Subdeco, a level of excellence. Mmh. Canal Plus sans le grand jeu. Jusqu'au 30 septembre, réabonnez-vous à votre formule actuelle et bénéficiez de 15 jours offerts à tout Canal Plus. Vivez 100% de la Ligue des Champions et les plus grands championnats de foot sur les chaînes Canal Plus Sport. Retrouvez la série explosive du continent, La Bataille des Chéris, sur A+, et la nouvelle série inédite Innocence sur Novelas TV. Et aussi, une sélection des meilleurs programmes éducatifs pour les élèves sur Nathan+. Alors, pour profiter de 100% de toutes vos envies, réabonnez-vous en boutique ou par paiement mobile et bénéficiez de 15 jours offerts à tout Canal+. C'est jusqu'au 30 septembre Okay, uh, welcome back. You're watching Prime uh, on my Media Prime. We are looking at the performance of uh, the Lions uh, yesterday when uh, they picked up that qualification ticket uh, for the Nations Cup that is going to be hosted by Ivory Coast uh, next uh, year, January to be precise. And uh, we you were still to learn um, when you look at when you look at. Um, Nigeria, Angola, because Angola is uh, going, uh, Senegal, Morocco, and other nations, You, Egypt is, is going to be there. You think uh, that Cameroon is going to say through and bring home the trophy? Is it possible? Well, uh, Mr. Liu, you know, um, when we talk about, as a Cameroonian, I definitely am hungry to touch the trophy, the trophy yeah. because definitely I'll be in Cote d'Ivoire to watch some of the games. Uh, but we, when we look at the other giants in uh, Africa, that is why we are saying that African football is changing the scope of international football. Because today in Africa, we don't have a smaller team. Reasons why we are saying that CAF should give Africa more places in the FIFA World Cup. 
Because in Africa today, you have Côte d'Ivoire, you have Cameroon, you have Nigeria, you have Algeria, you have Senegal. Egypt, Senegal, Morocco. Morocco. So many nations, so much so that we are so wet and we are hungry to see FIFA give Africa many more places in the coming um, World Cup that will be hosted in, um, I think it's um, in the USA, Morocco, uh, USA, Mexico, as well as in Canada. So we want to see Africa gain many more places because when we look at African football, we will be playing in some few months in Ivory Coast. It's very difficult these days to make a proper forecast because <laughs> remember, I think in, in Cameroon, the last AFCON, Nigeria was absent. That's a powerhouse of Africa that was absent. And in other editions, we have seen how powerhouses were booted out at the early stage of the tournament. We saw what, what, what happened to champions, uh, Algerians, yeah? Of course. Algeria, yeah. We're talking about Gabon. Gabon has been eliminated yeah, from the, the for, by, by Mor uh, Mauritania. Mauritania. Mm. So, Can you imagine? Uh, so that tells you that African football, the landscape of African football is changing and we need to give African football the place that it deserves as far as international football is concerned. For Cameroon to pick up, uh, to win, get the victory in Cote d'Ivoire, we need a very compact team and a team which is going to be uh, victory driven. And because I understand Cameroonians... You must be hungry for victory yeah. like the case was in uh, 2017. Yeah, because a lot of Cameroonians mm. believe in the tiki-taka football style of play, where they want to see like the Barcelona or the mm. Spanish side of yeah. play. No, everything Barista is... is talking about we did not see the game plan. And I yeah. understand. Mm. The barista is hungry to see that, that synergy of play. But again, to get a victory, at times it must not go through the tiki-taka system. The Germans have their style of play. Mm. The English is, uh, we, style... We saw what Mourinho did with... Uh, yeah. Yeah. The mm. Argentinians came with a different style of play mm. and they won the, uh, the World Cup, which is very different from the Spanish system of play. Mm. It therefore means what you need to do is, what are your strengths? You are building a team based on your strength and that's, that's how true. you define the strategy for the game. And based on the current performance of your players, you build a strategy to counteract your opponent and you get the victory. A game might not be so sweet, a game might not be so beautiful in the eyes, but you pick up first the three points. When you secure when you secure the three points, you now go back to the drawing board and you look at the synergy of players. Because in football, synergy of play is very important. A player could be individually talented, but collectively might not be good. A player could be individually talented, but on a tactical perspective, or he's technically good, but tactically he is not in his best performance on that day. As a result, he might definitely be sidelined. So those are the things that I want to see our players go to Cote d'Ivoire with a positive spirit, with a spirit to conquer, and once again, for us to Im uh, put our fingerprints in Africa as well as in the international scene. Okay. I'm confident that we might bring the trophy home. Okay, very confident that we might uh, make Cameroonians uh, leave this uh, glory. This again, I extend my greetings to Barista Tamfu. The last time we met was in my village uh, to bury the late uh, Chairman John Frundi. I will forever be grateful to my brother and friend Richard Padia Sanga is writing from Hamburg out there in uh, Germany. How do we build this synergy and a play style that uh, can actually rival um, powerhouses, current powerhouses like uh, Morocco, Senegal, um, Cote d'Ivoire, and um, Egypt? Yes, I think to me the first thing to look at is that uh, we should put competence. Mm. We should, the, the, the selection of players should be done on the basis of merits. When we do that, we also try to build that synergy by creating a kind of uh, good animosity within the Indomitable Lions. We should, they should, they, they, the players should feel that they have the colors of the country to defend. And not only ending at that, I think even the supporters, the, 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 the supporters too, 
people should be supporting the team, not because maybe they have given them envelopes. They should be supporting the team because they feel that they can bring, the, they can animate or raise their voice vis-a-vis -vis the team to make sure that they, 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 they all go in for the victory that they are looking for. So, to me, I think that uh, if we want to also build this synergy, government should be able to remove its hands, its political hands from the team. They should allow the team to manage the team as we are seeing. We have not been hearing about uh, players complaining again that uh, we have played and our prims have not been paid. You see, some of these, some of these grudges are fading away. And I think that is the, is the right time for me to congratulate uh, the hard work that uh, the president of the Kamun Federation is doing. I think since he has taken office, issues of prims have been side, has been put aside. Players are no more complaining that uh, they are not being paid what they are they, 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 they dues. We are also observing that we are not more being blocked maybe in an airport because there is no transportation or players are angry. We saw everybody went to the the the, 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 um, the World Cup, came back, no 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 talks. And I think that uh, if we if we leave the management of this team to the right actors, already at the level of the federation, I think the person who is there is the right man for me. I don't see any other person who could best who can best manage that federation at this point in time. I think he, I give him kudos for that. At the level of maybe the coaching, I think that uh, if uh, there is a good team built behind uh, the, 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 the national coach who is giving a listening ear to all his other assistants, if they, if they worked in that kind of a synergy, I'm sure that they will, be, they will be selecting the right players for the right post. And uh, also, like I said, the, you cannot you cannot go for any competition and win if you don't have the population behind you. If Camerounians are angry on certain socio-economic issues back home, do not have that energy to go and be supporting the national team. I think that we we, we so much need peace in our country to make sure that the harmony that we want to see in the football should be lived. There should be peace in Cameroon. If that is done, I think that everybody will feel at ease, players will not complain, supporters will not complain, administration will not complain, and I think that if we do like that, we'll be happy to 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 to, to, to accept victory, to, to receive victories. And also, African football has changed a lot. Hmm. We should not more continue to, to to have that mindset that no, we are the giants of Africa. Younger teams are coming up. Each teams, each team should be considered with the the high sense of respect knowing that they're not coming to play we too we should not also be going to Ivory coast to play to say no we are the giants and we we'll just have to go and win we need to prepare players need to be called up as early as early enough to come uh, to, to camp to make sure that there's good preparation because if we don't prepare well we should not be expecting results so players should prepare they should have enough time to play together because we know that uh, we have we have a team where players are playing in other uh, european clubs i think mm -hmm. they should make sure that uh, the, the team should make sure that these players come back home so that they are, they have enough time to play okay. together and i think that if we if we manage things this way we'll be able to have victories sumele kelvin watching us uh, from kong samba says uh, good evening mr liu you are highly welcome back uh, nice seeing you on set again okay emil uh, from jotin says welcome back boss Esther from Kumba says, you are highly welcome and thank God for joining us. Um, Daisy from Kumba says, welcome back, Mr. Liu. So glad to see you on set two. Okay, thank you, Mr. Liu. You are heartily welcome. Wabila Zinabu Kuna writing there. Hombungwa from Bafu says, welcome back, Mr. Liu. Glad to see you again. And Dosak Atom says, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. And to all the panelists, I don't think uh, Cameroon underestimated Burundi during the first half of the match. The quality of players called, especially Andre Onana, speak uh, volumes. That's to say the team manager never underestimated uh, Burundi. The first half was uh, a tough one for Burundi. Uh, came ready for a win. 
at all costs. However, bravo to the Lions for Afghan without Cameroon could really not uh, be interesting to some people. I believe with uh, some little more effort, they can secure their seat African title in Ivory Coast. Uh, Thomas is writing from Dibanda out there in uh, Boya and then this one says good evening Mr. Liu and to all the panelists I think we have uh, to congratulate our players and the entire management. I don't know the play style that Barrister Tamfu is talking about after such a brilliant uh, performance. I think Rigobert Song and Sameli too are doing a great job for the national team. Let uh, Cameroonians not be a problem to themselves. Uh, this is Paul and writing from Simbok and Yaoundi. I think I like Onana but it won't uh, be a good idea for the panelists to give him more than the necessary credit. Cameroon won Brazil at the World Cup without him. Okay, um, kudos to Mr. Ako. He is really a sports consultant. His points are edifying. Okay, Ma, Dr. Bison writing from Kumba says, Good evening, members of the panel. Bravo, Lions. Welcome back, Mr. Liu. Okay, good evening to you. This one also says that... Uh, Oops, uh, Mr. Liu, that football consultant really knows uh, what he's saying. Cameroonians want to know what they are not supposed to know. Everyone wants to be a coach, okay? Ta Ari Isa, this is Prince Princess Esther writing there. Ta Ari Isa says, Welcome, Mr. Kum, watching from Bamenda. Echok Echochu says, Watching from Yaoundé, the capital city of Cameroon. Uh, Fon Wasi Miran says, Watching from my kitchen. Welcome back, Mr. Kum, okay? Uh, Aki Kelsen says, watching from Ginny Kam Collins Ebolo, watching from my four Limbe, uh, Agawa Fashion says, watching from the green city of Kumba, Hostensia Agency says, uh, watching, no, welcome back, Mr. Liu. Ignatius um, B. Nzege says, uh, watching live from Banso. Uh, Samrich says, I'm watching from Gamdiri. Fred Yese, welcome back, Mr. Kung. Glad uh, you're back. Okay, thank you. Good news, you are watching from Duwala and Wakarin. Good evening, I'm watching from Tamulu. El Nasiru, watching from Hausa Palace, uh, Kumba. Okay, uh, Kilo Kennedy, watching from Susa Life. Uh, Mary Johnson, watching from Limbe. Honorable to Sam Kennedy says, I'm watching from Limbe. Uh, Levy schedule says watching live from Bermuda. Now let's talk about the the team spirit you just described, um, Magdala. How do we build on what we achieved yesterday to prepare and uh, not be frightened by these big names when we get to Ivory Coast? Uh, I think that uh, first of all, like uh, like every every human being should should approach something when they are heading into battle especially a very big battle like this one we are talking about africa's biggest showpiece which we are going out there like mr ako said like every of every cameroonian sitting back home we need to be optimistic we did it in 1984 when we won our first afghan navy coast we can do it this year i i see it to be a coincidence that we are talking about 84 and we are talking about 24. what makes us think that because we've been performing this way we cannot go to Ivory Coast and bring back the trophy. We, we, we grabbed it in 2017 when we were considered even one of the underdogs. I mean, we, we saw Cameroon eliminate a country like Senegal when Ondoa uh, denied Sadio Mane a penalty. Who could imagine that probably Cameroon would even clinch the trophy in 2017? It was unimaginable. But we did it. So it, there, there is, they said never say never or never say die until the bones are rotten. So we can still go there and like we 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 come true cameroonians that we are we are clamoring for victory we are we are hoping to bring back the trophy at home so i think that this team spirit that has been working for us this team spirit that we saw in Karua yesterday is what we should carry the persons that are going to be called up by the head coach to represent the colors of the nation in ivory coast next year we need this team spirit we need the, the, the spirit of a lion we need the fighting spirit you should you should you should play every game like somebody who has love for the nation. This yeah, is the kind of yeah, thing yeah, we yeah. need that is, that is, that is, that is a message. That is the message you are sending to the players when they arrive uh, at the Ivory Coast. But we need to build something that is supposed to be consistent that we are going. We are expected to carry to Cote d'Ivoire. How do we build that? It can only start now. 
-hmm. it can only start now like i said if we, it, it's going to depend to, on the selection that we are going to have we are passing this we can only pass a general message as at now because we do not know the players that are going to be called up to represent cameroon in ivory coast you mean you, you do not know that onana is going to ivory coast but we, we cannot be only we cannot we cannot only talk about are you Andrew saying that Abu, Abushu is not going to Ivory Coast. Right, come on, that's are that's, you that's, saying that's, that's is not going to Ivory Coast? No, we are not saying we we cannot say that who expected who, or who, who could think that maybe if maybe five Collins's own was telling but who could think that probably some key players like maybe kunde malong or martin hongla who is uh performing very well with his club out there would not be called up so we can only pass a general message to all the lions or all the the the, the Cameroonian players we have out there who are hoping to represent the country. For those of the key players that we have, we already have Andrew Nana, we have probably Fabrice Ondoa, we have Vincent Abubaka, we have Chupo Moting and the others. We can only tell them as early as now that they should develop this, this uh, team spirit that they've been using already, they've been portraying to us. It's what we want to see. We should keep our differences aside. Abubaka made an outing the other time and was like, maybe this player needs to listen to the coach, maybe the coach did not do this, maybe the coach wasn't supposed to do this he's a leader we, we we heard from him and probably what he said was in what he said there could be an iota of truth but he came out again yesterday to appreciate the team effort so it only means that it has improved it has improved so as early as now we can only start building it now for the players who think that they have already they already married their sports in the national team and will be representing or a potential representative of the country in Ivory Coast next year then I think that they should really just start a lane low keeping pride aside as at now okay. to see how they can defend the nation good next evening, year good evening to you willy bambot uh, watching us uh, from uh, douala here uh, my brother who lives out there in uh, but men that the northwest original capital and a special uh, good evening to you professor uh, kingsley Ngange, who is uh, one of the deputy vice chancellors of the University of uh, Boya, who should be watching us from a uh, small Sopo, where he resides in uh, Boya, city of legendary hospitality. How do we start preparing for a major um, tournament like what we are going to be partaking in uh, Cote d'Ivoire next year after a qualification um, like what we obtained yesterday? Yes, uh, Mr. Leo, I think that um, <clears throat> in order for us to get um, a victory, there are some basics that must be done. Mm -hmm. We Issues of logistics mm -hmm. must be taken into consideration as soon as possible because we don't want scenarios where um, we start having some little details which could destabilize the team as far as logistics is concerned. We need issue of the player's current performance all our players should be selected on based on their current performance, not based on their past performance. Leo, yesterday, there were about seven players who were not in the list, but who played in 2022 in their first leg game. Kunde Malong wasn't there yesterday. Mm -hmm. Five Collins wasn't there yesterday. Uh, Ngande Ganji wasn't there yesterday. Omoshala wasn't there yesterday. Martin, the Hongla, Martin Hongla wasn't there yesterday. And that tells you about the competitive spirit. That's what we need to get the victory in Cote d'Ivoire. The boys must be competitive. Clinton G was back. Because of his current because form. Because of his current performance. Mm -hmm. And that's the message we should be passing to the boys. No sport is won. You win your sport based on your current performance. Harold Mukudi was also brought back because Harold of his current Mukundi was brought back his because current, of his current yeah. performance mm -hmm. in Greece. Mm -hmm. And it's very it's so glaring that if you didn't bring Mukudi, a lot of questions would have been asked. And that's what we are saying that in order for us to go to Cote d'Ivoire and get the victory, let the players, wherever they play, they should be playing putting in mind that there's going to be a major tournament for which they have to defend the image of the nation. Mm. If we do that, we'll definitely be going in the right direction. Now, when we get to Cote d'Ivoire, there are some issues that must be done in order for us to get that synergy, for us to have that harmonized spirit mm -hmm. in the game. You, we must be technically good. We must, the players must be physically good. The players must be psychologically good, mm -hmm. and the players must be tactically good. When you have those cannon put in place, that's when you can get a victory. Because if, 
in terms of the tactical disposition of the game, if you don't have the right players to play based on that tactical disposition, you risk not winning the game. It's not about scoring 10 goals. You can score 10 goals and you concede 11. <laughs> you are out. It's about getting the right strategy. You score and you defend well. You win the game. Um, um, yesterday we saw uh, uh, Osimen. He is the highest goal scorer in the tournament, in the qualifiers this year. He got 10 goals playing for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But last AFCON, Nigeria was out. Nigeria wasn't present in Cameroon. But this time around, they have gone back to their drawing board. They have done some adjustments. Nigeria was in Cameroon and they played in Garoua. Uh, yeah, they were. They means out in the sense that probably they left early. They left very the early. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's another dog team who. Yeah. Are, who, that who yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. In Tunisia, Tunisia defeated Nigeria mm. in Garoua. Yeah. I think that was 1 0. Mm. And where people like um, Victor Moses were totally out, 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 outsmarted. Mm -hmm. So, uh, coming back to my analysis, for Cameroonians, for Cameroon to get to where we want to be, issues of logistics must be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Barista talked about the fact that politics, Leo, football is not an isolated activity. This is what Cameroonians don't understand. Football is not an isolated activity. We, we, saw, we saw the involvement of the French uh, government for Kylian Mbappé to stay with Paris Saint-Germain. What we need to understand mm. is, even if football is not an isolated activity, Consequently, do not think that there will never be political influence. However, what, whether it is economic, sports, mm. politics itself, you need to have the right strategy. For example, the state will have to disburse money to the Lions mm. during the tournament. That is from the state. That is a political decision that comes right from the state. Mm. Secondly, it is the head of state that has signed a decree talking about the payment of players' salaries before the commencement of a tournament. That was a political decision. However, what we are saying as sportsmen is we need the right politicians to be around football, not people who come for selfish in interest or to distort the performance of the Lions. It therefore means that politics should be set aside, should part Politics should be involved, but at the right position. Mm -hmm. We don't need to mix things up. Where the coach has to make a decision, it should be left for the coach to, to decide. Where the president of the FA has to make a decision, he should definitely make it at that level. But where the political aspect, uh, pol politicians want to make their decision, it should also end at that level. We should not mix up things. So what I'm trying to say is, in terms of synergy of effort, be it political, be it social, be it those in civil societies, they can also always chip in their ideas as far as uh, the lions are concerned, but we need to understand at what level and what is the limit of your interference as far as the lions are concerned. A politician should not be making the decision like selection of a, of a player where that is the responsibility of, of the coach. We need to understand roles and responsibility as far as management of our football team is, is concerned. Indeed. And if we understand that, we will definitely be performing our duties in our right roles. So I keep saying that synergy of effort, the Ministry of Finance last time disbursed I think about four billion when we went for, 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 for Qatar. That's politics. So they should be disbursing the money at the right time. We should not get to a scenario where in January, that's when money, we are still struggling to, for money to be disbursed. We should ensure that those for logistics will definitely have to visit Cote d'Ivoire, visit the hotels that uh, the Lions is being reserved for the Lions. We look at the, the, where the, the, the hotel is located, somewhere, and we look at the distance from the hotel to maybe the training pitch. Those are the decisions that people in charge of logistics will have no, to look no, at. No, no, no. We, 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 we understand that before this match, uh, there are uh, persons within circles in Cameroon that actually prayed for Cameroon to be beaten, to be vindicated in one way or the other, and we are heading for a major uh, competition. How do we um, work in such a way as to quiet this, 
the existing uh, factions in Cameroon. We know them already. You know, Faker Food has problems with this, Song has problems. How do we uh, sort these things out so that we go to the Ivory Coast as a family? Yes, I think uh, the way to solve problems is through dialogue. Mm -hmm. At times, even if it comes to negotiate, even against your own interests, at times when you see that the stakes of the nations is being threatened, mm -hmm. you go for it. I do not expect that we are, while we are preparing a, a competition like the, the, the African Nation Cup in Ivory Coast, we should be dragged in this court, in this jurisdiction, uh, this fraction should be divided or quarreling with the president. I think that uh, it's high time that we try to give a hand to all these fractions. Uh, the persons who have the responsibility of managing the affairs of football today should think that it, it, it may come to a point in time that you may disagree with somebody, not forever. Mm -hmm. We saw the incident with uh, Henri Jalakwan. I think the president of the FA Cup can call him that we have bigger days ahead or we have bigger events ahead. Let's, what can we do with your problem? They analyze if, if it is that uh, the, the, the football the, the association has to maybe let go something. It will let go so as maybe to satisfy its interest. We saw the last executive meeting where somebody who was who says he has been rehabilitated was not present. So some of these differences, I think, is time to quiet it down. Put negotiation on it. <laughs> put conciliation on the table. Yes, because if we say that we will not dialogue we don't want to conciliate. We are supreme. I, I'm not. I'm very sure that the spirit will not be the same. We need quiet mindset, and for us to obtain this quiet mindset is to put open our hands to approach our brothers who have maybe dissenting opinions. I don't think there is any problem on this that, that cannot find a solution, no matter what. So. We should we should approach the, the competition that is coming ahead with with a, a good mindset, and I think that uh, uh, the actors should look at themselves. And if actually all of them are lovers of football, because no matter what they are fighting against, mm -hmm. it's because they want the best of our Cameroonian football. So if you want the best of your Cameroonian football, and uh, we have events coming up, I think that you should first of all think that uh, for that just for that sake your personal interest maybe will override this general interest and i think that you should be open to accept or trying to approach your opponent for any dialogue so i, I look forward that uh, we should pipe down we should put our challenges down. negotiations should be open yes mm. negotiations should be open to all the parties they should sit and talk and see how they can have Ms. a win-win position. Mr. Mr. Aku, you laughed while, while he was uh, yes. explaining. What's funny? I almost asked that, is there no room for reconciliation? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you laugh? <laughs> yes, I laugh because uh, the barrister made mention of um, Angela Kwan. And um, in my opinion, when I look at, um, we've been talking about players, the competency of players, and to choose the right players. We should also be talking about choosing the right people to manage as far as the administration is concerned. Mm -hmm. We cannot be saying one thing for the players and saying the other thing, the for contrary, the mm -hmm. for, the manager, for, the, yeah. for the managers. Mm -hmm. If you are fit to be part of the federation, of course, you will definitely be present. And if you know that you are in an association that do have bylaws, you have to respect the bylaws. Nobody pushed you out. You wrote your resignation letter. Njalakwan wrote his resignation letter. So I think that if you have the quality to be part, and again, again, I don't like to be individualistic. Mm -hmm. We are talking about a nation. Southwest football has so many uh, stakeholders. I can give you a guy. Magdala will know him so well. The guy who, who is the owner of the Kick 442. Uh, he's a fine brain. Yes, Angle Leslie, yeah. He's a fine brain as far as football is concerned. Why should I sit on a, on a, on a platform and I bothered about Henry? 
There are so many others who can still deliver as far as management of football is concerned. Even back at the reg region, Leo, permit me to tell you, even somebody like Kede Lawrence is a fine brain as far as football is concerned. I'm not there to be so uh, to make to personalize it to be in Jalakwan issue when we are looking at management. If we cannot get the best from A and we think that we can get that best from B, we can still work with B. We should How, go for the best. We, we should definitely be going for the best because we are saying that the player should be the best. Mm -hmm. Why, we should also be saying that as far as management is concerned, we should be going for the, for the best. Because all this issue, this brouhaha that we have been having, uh, I've not been on so many platforms because I, I did not really find uh, it so pertinent because at, today our major focus is the footballers. The interest of the footballers should be prime. It should be the primordial aspect of all Cameroonians to see that our local football is being developed. Let our local players earn 200,000 francs as it is already stated by the FECA Food Rules and Regulations. Let our local coaches earn 250,000 francs as minimum, already, minimum mm -hmm. as is already stated in the FECA Food Rules and Regulations. If we all adhere to those rules and regulations and we keep away our selfish interests i think that we'll be developing football at a local level i've talked about angle leslie i'm sure he doesn't know me as a person but i know i've seen the quality of what he has been doing i've be, I've, I've, I've talked about Kede lawrence he doesn't know me as an individual but in the forums in which we are as far as our sports milieu is concerned he is a fine brain when we are looking at getting quality for the lions we should be thinking of getting the quality managers because the quality managers if we have problems at the level of manage of management is definitely going to affect these players we need a scenario in southwest today we have um so many other clubs the young guy who is the president of uh, Isosa Football Club of of Limbe, they just qualified for for the uh, for, for for the early two. I should be talking about him as well. And the guys, the guys put up a, a, a formidable, a formidable show, show in Yaoundé. In, in Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. We should be talking and about. The same angle as vice president of the team. We should be talking about other persons who can also bring in good ideas we shouldn't be focused on any because the problem we are having is when we start focusing on some particular individuals leo quality management mm -hmm. we should seek for quality management we should have in a scenario the barrister talk about harmonizing people but you cannot harmonize people when they even lack emotional intelligence you definitely cannot harmonize that kind of individual. No matter the number of dogs you mix with uh, lions, they will definitely be different animals. But you need to harmonize people who have the same philosophy, same mindset. And that's why we are saying that in some few days to come or some few months from today, the elite one will commence. And when we talk about the lions, the lions is just the output of a structured elite one and two. And an elite one and two, that is, where, that, is, that is the breeding ground to harness talent. So much so that at the level of the national team, we should have an incubator of talent so much so that we can choose as okay. many as possible. Now, we are, we are looking at our preparations. Uh, what, what caliber of uh, teams uh, should Cameroon be confronting for their friendlies? And how, much, how many uh, friendlies uh, should we... I'll be looking at uh, before we go for the Nations Cup and uh, possibly what impact would these friendlies uh, have on uh, the performance when they, 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 they take on the opponents in Ivory Coast? Talking about, let me, let me begin with having an impact on our performance. I think that uh, we, we go for friendlies to weigh our strengths and our weaknesses. Mm. And I think that uh, taking friendlies as early as now, especially uh, with a team that we, we, we can compare our strength with, a team like Senegal. Cameroon has a friendly with Senegal in the days ahead. And I think that if we are going for a friendly with a team like this, Senegal is defending champion, will be defending champion at the 2023 20, AFCON next year and uh, Senate, like I said defending champion means they are reigning champions in Africa right now and we'll be going in for a friendly uh, with, with this country it only means that we are going into 
to to amend our ways we are going into weigh our strengths our weaknesses to see how we can right our wrongs and of course build a formidable team that will be representing cameroon in ivory coast next year and probably we may have another friendly with uh, mali if i'm not mistaken we may have another friendly with mali after cameroon so after that probably the federation after is senegal. going to after senegal we may have another friendly with mali and then after that we may see how the federation probably or uh they can look uh see how to work uh, out friendly with other countries maybe the likes of morocco uh, who are heavyweights in in africa we had a friendly with mexico probably mexico needed us because we we're preparing to for a competition and i think that we are going in for friendlies not just because we we want to go and joke if we we cannot approach a friendly game this is this is one mindset we need to get it out of our heads we cannot approach a friendly game because we are thinking that it's a friendly a friendly is to weigh our strengths and weaknesses and a friendly is an opportunity for the coach to weigh his selections his squad if you are given an opportunity as a player during a friendly game and you don't prove it we, we don't think that you're going to prove it when you have the opportunity during a, a, a competition so an what, international what, what, what competition I get, what i get from your analysis is that we need those heavyweights exactly but does, I think it, does it really matter it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter we saw we saw the performance out there with mexico mexico is a heavyweight we saw the performance out there especially we're talking about mexico who has uh, uh Oshawa as a goalkeeper who is a very a very i mean prolific goalkeeper it's not just about playing with the heavyweights mr leo but you do not underestimate the team look at what happened with comoros cameroon and comoros we outsmarted comoros but comoros played with a goalkeeper who it, it was a player third goalkeeper and it was a very 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 difficult match for cameroon so we are not approaching a game like uh, away in another country like an underdog we can still play we we, out, we, we defeated brazil we did and brazil probably underestimated us we are not approaching a friendly because we want to play heavyweights we can still play we can still go for a friendly with a country like probably uh, uh sierra leone we saw their performance during cameroon we can take on a lesotho or something like that and they beat cameroon it can happen so i think that we must not just look at the heavyweights but i think i think that one of the main reasons why a country gets uh to play a friendly is because they want to amend their ways they want to they want to up they are, they are playing style let's, and of let, course let's get back to the game of uh, yesterday okay uh, barista many persons actually many many news uh, paper headlines already said that uh, that was going to be uh, probably the last game for Rigo Besson. did you see it that way yeah, and uh, even after the qualification do you still think he's the man for the job yes you know that uh, people were saying that because we saw the see ever since he was appointed we have actually not lived uh, the kind of football that we expect. Like I said, we always qualified in a mystical way, or we make our way. So many people were not more very, very optimistic, especially for those who are who have very low spirit, because we know that uh, they could, they, the team, even though we are struggling with some of these qualifications, we actually don't have that play style. At first, we used to see, we used to know that uh, when the, a ball would maybe be at the forefront, maybe Patrick Mumba would score, it was certain. Or that uh, maybe Jeremy Ditap is sure if there's a free kick, it will be sure. We had a playing style which was. Yeah, that was then. Yeah, that was then. No, we had, we that had, is what we, had, we, we now we have. about 2000. Good. Two. Now we have moved to a new era where we expect to also see like other teams. When we look at other nations playing football like Senegal, I was very impressive in there. Just play style. You see, everybody is engaged, but yeah, we we, we still have the, the the impression that we are still like testing our players. We try here, yeah, we we'll see if it can work. If it doesn't work, we we'll try here. Yeah. So we don't. We are not. We are not yet fixed on some certain players, and I think that that is what that was what was making the perception of yesterday's match to be to be like we don't know anything can happen so you were part of those who were praying no, that we I, lost I, my and song be sacked no my my because focus at, already because when when you say when you say we have not had a game a plan a play style and that our team no longer performed since uh song took over you're comparing to what era to which other coach and um we have had we have gone to, to, for many at least uh, two or three world cups coming back without a point so what are we comparing here and i ask i ask earlier on apparently we are talking in the air what objectives were given for some 
when he took over the reins of this of this uh, national team. Yeah, it's true that when he took over, we had the World Cup that was ahead of they us. They told him qualify us for qualify the World Cup. us for the World Cup. Qualify us for the Nations Cup. Yes, that's mm. what I'm saying. He did it. Mm -hmm. He should be congratulated. But we still, me, I still feel that there is still that we are still lacking in our playing style. You want to see these lions perform uh, the way they Lauren Etame, At they, least so that they, when they, you they know format. that, yes, mm -hmm. you could even already give a, a right forecast in those days. But today, you are not sure. You say, ah, maybe. Yeah, but, but, maybe. He, but, he, but he said he said that in those days, you had Lauren who was playing for for Arsenal. for Arsenal, you had women who was playing for Verde de Brem, you had um, even Kala, uh, yes, all of them. What Chato? Yes, those but all of them with with with. Olembi, Kaiser Slot, yeah. Marcel. So, yeah, but but what are you comparing? No, that I'm saying. I'm I'm like trying to say that today the players that the coach maybe is having. It is true that maybe they don't have. They are not to those uh, international standard. Maybe all the players are not in those big clubs that you are calling. But now with the players that he's having, he should make sure that his selection is objective. Tell me, tell me who is out there performing better than the, the guys who were caught up. <laughs> but for example, yeah, we should not be talking from yes, the sky. Yes, because the people out there, when we, we when we speak like that, we may give the impression that there are guys who are actually performance like Basogok who is out there playing. No, Basogok is, yeah. Baso is already is an old broom. So yes, uh, can 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 Cameroonians no. understand the best guys who are performing for their clubs who are not called up? It's true that I don't have uh, I don't have that mastery. I don't have that picture right now. But mm. I believe that. Uh, for the lineup that I saw, I saw that something was still lacking. Yeah, but which I believe that there were some players even at the bench who, who performed more better than the ones who were on the pitch. On the pitch, we we, we maybe we may be, be talking from the blues. I want us to be practical. Who are those who are performing out there were not caught up by head coach Rigo Besson? Um. <coughs> Leo, for us to get the victory in Cote d'Ivoire, mm. the current squad is still good. Mm. However, you need to make your team more competitive. When the team is competitive, it gives you the opportunity, and even you, the coach, it gives you the opportunity to choose the best. For example, you have Jean-Pierre Samet, who is mm. also a striker that wasn't called up. You have Gan Ganago wasn't called up. Now, when it's an eye opener with the uh, coming back of Clinton J, it's an eye and, opener and to Harold. each yeah and Mukudi. Yeah, it's an eye opener to each and every one of them that you have to keep performing, and based on your performance, you could be called up, and it makes even those who are currently there. For example, Carl to uh, um, uh, Carl Toko Ekambi. No, Mumin Gamalu was not really he happy with the time of uh, play, according to him. And that is why, and even after the goal, we did not see him celebrate. Yes, that's and that's, that's why, yeah. and that's the beauty of a team. Mm -hmm. You make it so much, it becomes so competitive, so much so that nobody is too sure that they merit, the they merit that exactly. position. Mm -hmm. Consequently, you'll be getting the best from that player. That what, like, what we got from uh, Abu Bakr uh, when from, he was benched? Of course. In favor of uh, Chupi Mutin out and there. When he yeah. came back, mm -hmm. he did perform so well. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you said something about uh, the friendlies, which I just want to chip in a little. Permit okay. me. You know, when we organize friendlies, it's for what purpose? One, for synergy of play. Synergy of play, because it's an opportunity for the, each and everyone to understand the movement of each player. It therefore means. Uh, Gan uh, Chupo Moti will definitely understand the positioning of, of Abubakar. That's one. Secondly, for psychological purpose. Mm -hmm. Because at times you're not going for friendlies to pick up big weights or the small weights. At times, during friendlies, you could, be, you could win so many friendlies, but you get into the competition, you are eliminated. Because apparently you did not choose the right and you did not blend. You, the purpose for the friendly wasn't achieved. Then lastly, for the strategy of the game mm -hmm. because you play those friendlies to understand that if i have to play a team of such caliber what strategy of play will i adopt based on the synergy of play it therefore means I could, the coach could decide that pairing abubaka 
with Ngamalu might not work, even though individually they are good players. But collectively, it could be a, a failed strategy. Those are some of the reasons why we go in for those friendlies. And the objective for the friendly should be set so much so that when you leave after the game, we could go back to the drawing board, assess the performance based on the objective that was set. You could play a friendly game and you have been defeated. But during a match proper, you win because you have understood the purpose for the friendly and maybe you wanted the synergy of play and maybe you want to understand the different the different compartment of the, and the movement of foot the, of the ball which is the vertical column of play maybe that's what you wanted to achieve even if you lose the game but you have achieved the style of play the vertical movement of play mm -hmm. in that game you now discover that in a match proper you can still implement that strategy the players will definitely be able to align with the strategy so that is why at times we have some of these play uh, of these uh, friendlies so that you get the right strategy and on a day proper you adopt it you win the game okay. so i think that that is what the, the the coach in the days ahead we shall be doing good evening uh, mr kum i would like uh, the coach uh, share with us uh, the text that gives the head of state power to make uh, certain decisions uh, with regards to what he has said I would also like him to share with us if it is uh, right within the laws uh, of CAF and FIFA. And G. Lucas is uh, watching and writing from mile 16. Can I respond to him, please? Okay, briefly. Yeah, the head of state promulga uh, promulgated a uh, decree some years ago that states stated the duration that payments for players should be made. And why did this decree come out? Because we had had circumstances where match bonuses were not being paid to players on a timely basis and players couldn't board aircraft there were strike actions mm -hmm. so in order to avoid all those that's when the head of state came out with this consequently pay, uh, match bonuses are now being paid before the commencement the of any tournament okay uh Akwo from Kumbas is happy to observe uh, mature persons on the media this night. Inform your colleagues not to bring uh, some people who come and shout at other persons during such uh, programs. Uh, more credits uh, to. Okay, um, thank you very much. Greetings, Mr. Liu. The barista is correct. Uh, the formation and play style of the Lions was not the best despite our victory yesterday. Mr. Liu, truth be told, uh, the Swallows of Burundi made more collective moves than us. Secondly, Mr. Liu, you guys uh, talked of selections to the team based on performance. Why was uh, Michael Ngadu, who qualified the team for the World Cup and was dropped till date, despite a uh, proven with his uh, club? I don't know. Uh, Ngadu is in China now? Yes. Yes, he's in China. Yeah. Okay, Daisy says, uh, so glad uh, to see you back. Uh, good evening to you, Daisy. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I think those who wanted our team to lose, uh, they should never have anything to do with uh, Cameroon football again. Ibrahim is writing from uh, Bomenda. Welcome, Mr. Liu. Hope you enjoyed your leave. We missed you. God blessings. Uh, Masu is writing from Boya. Thank you, Masu. And uh, to all of you who are writing to welcome me back, I also missed you guys. Uh, Mr. Liu, you are welcome back. Please uh, tell Barrister to speak with clarity. 2002 is not 2023. Let's understand the players we have now and work with them according to their ability. Okay? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Stephen Mwambo says, good evening. The Lions put up a good performance individually and collectively. However, we all can agree that w our strikers were not uh, at uh, the best because our defense was strained and fewer crosses came uh, the way. I, like most, Cam I, like most Cameroonians, noticed uh, that Fire Collins' absence was very evident. More importantly, Michael Ngandu is needed in that defense uh, to coordinate it and allow Nohu, Tolu, and Fai get up uh, there and deliver crosses for the strikers. I think the effort put 
in place to bring on and should be directed uh, to towards uh, bringing back Michael Ngandu and help us win uh, that cup next year in Ivory Coast. Bravo to the Lions and welcome back uh, President Leo. Okay, thank you. Stephen Mambo. Also, Mr. Kuma, I think the players we have are the best we can have, but our coach needs to develop a playing style that will bring out uh, the brilliance in the players. So, the coach has the responsibility of bringing a strategy and tactics. Okay. Um, we are almost at the end of the program. Now, what do you see us, uh, where do you see us ending in Ivory Coast? Hmm. Uh, as, as, a, as a Cameroonian that, that I am, I'm optimistic. Like, I want us to come back home on the last day. That is on the on the, on. We are going to come back home probably after the 11th of February with the trophy. We want it in every coast. We can still go back there and do it. And of course, I want us to make history by doing that. So I believe in my in our players, and I believe that they are going to make us smile. Uh, like I said, I am optimistic. I have hopes and I cannot say that Cameroon is not going to go any further than the, it's not going to do better and it's not going to uh, come back in the group stage. Never. I will not say that. I want us to make the finals on the 11th of February and then come home smiling. Okay. We go win. We go take the, we'll take the cup. We go take the cup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Vice, thank you for coming. Yes. Thank you so much. And I also wish to extend my heartfelt uh, friendship. Mm -hmm. So Padia Sanga, okay. yes, he, he greeted me, and I think that uh, he had a safe return to Germany, and he's doing well with his activities. Mm -hmm. And I also wish to uh, to extend a hand of fellowship to my political friend Michel Ndoki. You know, we we passed through some dark times, and I think that uh, wherever she is, she's on recess and thinking. I think we should back. take. I should. I should host you here, um, maybe next week on Prime uh, to talk about uh, what you went through yeah. in the CRM. I really appreciate. Yes, yes and uh, you also tell us uh, your, your. I don't know whether it's prospects or political plans. Yes, Are you joining a new party? Definitely. If you host me, I think we, it will be an opportunity for me to tell Cameroonians what exactly are my next political ambitions or plans. You want to be the next <laughs> Definitely, uh, I think uh, it's not um, it's not only safeguard to some particular categories of persons. I mm -hmm. think that uh, when you fulfill the conditions already, uh, you are 35 years old. Mm -hmm. You are fit and proper to be the president of this country. Okay, and I'm already more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ako, thank you for coming. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Leo. I want I wish to say. Good evening to uh, Mr. Augustin Sopo, who is the Tema Plan Manager of uh, ENIO at Mundimba. And special greetings to the people of Mundimba who are fans of Prime R. We thank you all for watching, and I will not uh, end this program without thanking Lasha Kingsley, who sat in for me, as well as uh, Faith Tata and uh, Fon Quinta, and the marvelous job that was done throughout. Uh, my absence a year by you, Eli and um, Desmond and the production team and everybody who works with uh, My Media Prime TV. I'm immensely um, grateful to you guys and to all of you who have sent messages uh, welcoming me. I'm say, I'll only say I am happy, I'm thankful for the love that you guys have expressed to me since I left. You've been writing every blessed a day wishing me well and my family and also calling on me to come back. I'm here. So I am expecting the presence. You guys wanted me to be a back now. <laughs> I'll be expecting the presence uh, yet as from tomorrow. You guys should start bringing them granuts or puff, puff or beans or whatsoever. I'll be expecting them. Thank you so much, so much, so much, so much. I know that you love me through what you guys have uh, been writing to me since I went over to see the white man country. But it's also also very, very interesting out there. I would love to share my experience. I think that we have a lot of work to do in this nation. Our mayors, please, you guys are sleeping. Our mayors, please, you have a lot of work to do. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.